Let's cover the context and principles of online dispute resolution. In what way did it come about? And what are the six principles that it relies on? Let's take a quick look. OVR came about in the context of finding efficient approaches for dispute resolution. So historically, the first move towards efficiency was AVR as an alternative to litigation. Negotiation, mediation, and arbitration methods that are faster, more efficient, and less costly than courts. Then came ODR as the next step, an even more flexible and less costly approach to dispute resolution, doing it online. So put simply, ODR, also known as EADR, electronic ADR, IADR, or virtual ADR, is a broad term that encompasses many forms of ADR and even litigation itself by incorporating electronic means into the dispute resolution process, including the use of the internet, email, streaming video, and other IT tools. When using ADR, both parties may not even need to meet face-to-face -face and may communicate solely through the internet. All three main forms of ADR have electronic versions, so negotiation exists as e-negotiation, or electronic negotiation, or cyber negotiation, which may be automated or assisted. In automated negotiation, both parties submit monetary figures to an algorithm that compares them with the average for similar situations and then outputs a settlement suggestion. In assisted negotiation, the parties simply negotiate over the internet using emails or web video or others as proof of the communication. In terms of mediation, electronic mediation simply involves a neutral third party mediating the settlement, but using the internet for its processes and evaluation. And electronic arbitration involves a third party making a binding decision, but again, over the internet, after hearing arguments and seeing the evidence online, with document submissions, streaming video, teleconferencing, or others. ODR is mostly used nowadays by a specific website or a corporation to signal people that they are safe in case something goes wrong. For example, eBay has an ODR platform, and the goal is for any person to know that if a dispute arises, eBay's ODR platform can deal with it effectively and generate results for you. Usually, ODR itself relies on six principles that must be obeyed for a successful implementation. The first is accountability. In short, providing effective results in terms of resolution that external parties can recognize as valid. The second is transparency. Every party involved should have transparency on redress options, decisions, as well as the costs and the durations of all processes involved. In many cases, there is a trade-off here with confidentiality, because the more confidential information is, the less transparent you are, and vice versa. The third principle is accessibility. In other words, users should have access to their information constantly, at any time of the day, at any time of the day, save naturally for scheduled downtime in the platform, but otherwise, everything must be accessible. After that, credibility or accreditation. In short, the DR processes in ODR should be built on a foundation of quality. The professionals should be accredited by associations or by other means. Then comes security. The platform must store confidential information and verify identities. Again, sometimes there is a trade-off here with transparency. The more transparent that the platform is, showing results to the outside world, the less secure that confidential information is, and vice versa. And finally, enforceability. In short, ODR decisions must be legally enforceable. Something worth mentioning that also comes up frequently in ODR procedures, and actually in all ADR procedures, is the matter of choice of law. Or in other words, when both parties are in different territories, which law governs the dispute? The rule of thumb in ODR is that if both parties belong to different nations, 
they usually agree on a jurisdiction together. And in case of lack of agreement, the one selected is the one for the ODR provider's location. So if someone in the UK and someone in Germany have a dispute using a platform headquartered in the United States, if they cannot agree on a jurisdiction, it's the United States law. If this is not possible, then the parties usually choose one of the main conventions or model laws for international dispute resolution, such as, for example, the United Nations Commission of International Trade Laws Model Law on E-Commerce, or the UN Convention on the Use of Electronic Communications of International Contracts, or the New York Convention, which helps foreign arbitration be recognized worldwide. What are some examples of the context and principles of ODR? The first are settlements and awards. We touched on this previously. How are ODR decisions enforceable? In order to be enforceable, these decisions usually come as settlement agreements, which are contracts that must be enforced by a court later, or arbitral awards, which are binding but only if all parties agree to them. Then comes transparency versus confidentiality. As mentioned, there is a trade-off here. On one hand, details must be kept confidential. But on the other hand, transparency helps show results and trust in the ODR platform. And finally, there are different shapes for ODR. There are specific ODR mechanisms for negotiation, settlements, mediation, and many other forms, as long as the dispute resolution is achieved through digital means. What are our key takeaways here? The first is that ODR is simply electronic ADR. It's an open framework for ADR through digital means, which further reduces costs and increases flexibility. Even litigation, which is not a form of ADR itself, can also be augmented by ODR by making it electronic. Out of curiosity, these are known as cyber courts versus traditional courts. Then, all forms of ADR exist in ODR. There are implementations of negotiation, mediation, and arbitration processes, and there is usually one or multiple versions of ODR for each. And finally, there are six principles for ODR to be successful. There must be accountability, so the decision can be enforced. There must be transparency in terms of data, accessibility to that data, credibility in the processes used, security of data and identities, and enforceability of the decisions. So as we see, online dispute resolution came about as an even more flexible and faster method than usual ADR, or alternative dispute resolution methods. It also relies on six key principles that must be properly implemented for the platform to be considered trustworthy.